Welcome back, geometers. Today's lesson comes from chapter three, section one, and we're going to learn about pairs of lines and pairs of angles. Before we get into our lesson, I want you to recall from your memory, what does it mean for two lines to be parallel or perpendicular? So go ahead and hold up your arms and show me parallel lines. And your arms are kind of right next to each other, right? Now show me with your arms perpendicular. And you make a cross or an X, you make a T, something like that. Good. Let's stretch your memory. What does it mean for, what are the slopes of parallel lines? What do you recall about the slopes of parallel lines? So in the equation, the slope intercept form Y equals MX plus B. You have two different lines. M is the slope. Their M's are equal. They have the same slope. So if two lines are parallel, they have the same slope. What about perpendicular lines? How do their slopes compare? Their slopes are opposite reciprocals. Their product, if you multiply them together, is negative one. And we're gonna use that more in the next lesson. So let's go ahead and jump into today's lesson. So parallel and perpendicular. So here we have two parallel lines right here. We have line AB and line CD. And two lines are parallel. Now here's the geometric concept. Two lines are parallel if they are coplanar and do not intersect. Okay, so coplanar is a term you learned a couple lessons ago. Coplanar means that those two lines are on the same plane. Okay, so if two lines are on the same plane and they do not intersect, we know that they are parallel. Okay, can you imagine what it would be like if two lines were non-coplanar? and don't intersect. Well, that's gonna be our next part of our lesson. So let's go ahead and look at perpendicular. Okay, perpendicular. Oh, one other thing about parallel lines with notation. Okay, with notation. So the notation is line AB is parallel. This symbol, these two straight lines means parallel, is parallel to line CD. And that's the notation that you'll write over here, but on the diagram to indicate that these two lines are parallel, that is what you'll see. You'll see an arrowhead sort of right in the middle or somewhere on the line and another arrowhead that corresponds in that same position. So these two arrowheads are telling you that those two lines are parallel. Now, if you have two sets of parallel lines in the same diagram, Okay, what they're going to do um, in the textbook or in your tests or homework or, you know, whatever, you'll see instead of just one set of parallel lines. So if these two lines are parallel, you'll have one arrowhead. And then if you have another set of parallel lines, they'll have two arrowheads and then three arrowheads, four arrowheads, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so by having two arrowheads, that shows that those two lines are parallel, but not parallel to these lines that have one arrowhead. Okay. All right, uh, perpendicular lines. So two lines are perpendicular if they're coplanar and intersect at a 90 degree angle. Okay, so let's talk about notation here. This notation I think you're already familiar with. This is a right angle symbol, a right angle symbol. So we know that line X, XW and line YZ are perpendicular because of this right angle, okay? Here is your notation, line WX is perpendicular to line YZ. This symbol, perpendicular, it kind of looks like an upside down capital T, but it shows, you know, kind of, it kind of indicates perpendicularity. So now let's talk about this next case. This next case is new probably to you, and it is called skew. So two lines are skew if they're not coplanar and do not intersect. Okay, so if they are coplanar and don't intersect, then they're parallel. But let's say that they're not coplanar and they do not intersect, okay? So here's a diagram and line AB is sitting on this plane that is indicated by this red um, sort of parallelogram, okay? So line AB is on that plane. Line CD is not sitting on that plane, okay? And these two lines do not intersect. Okay, they, therefore those two lines are skew. Okay, and I'll show you a couple other diagrams for skewedness, okay? So skew does not have its own notation. We just write that the two lines are skew. So line CD and line AB are skew lines, okay? 
Um, here's another way to look at or to, to visualize skew lines. So we have these two planes and these two planes, in this case, I drew them as parallel planes. Yes, planes can be parallel. Okay, so up on sort of top here, we have this plane Q and underneath it, we have plane R. And on this top plane, plane Q, we have line P, the blue line. And on this bottom plane, plane R, we have line M. Line P and line M do not intersect. Okay, they do not intersect, but they are not parallel. They're non-coplanar. Okay. So there's a perfect example of two lines, line P and line M, that are skew. So this, this to me is a little bit easier way to visualize it. Okay, but there's another way. Uh, another example that the textbook authors really like to use is this box, okay? And technically this box is called a rectangular prism. Okay, so now in three dimensions, okay, you have this, this rectangular prism and let's look at one of its edges, this line FE, okay? Can you think of a line that is skew, okay? Or one of the edges of the box that is skew to that line. Well, one is this one right here, this line segment BG, the line that goes through um, BG, okay, would be skew to the line that goes through FE. So line EF and line GB are skew, okay. Are there any other skew lines that you can see in this diagram, okay? Any other lines that are skew to this line Okay, other than line BG. Yeah, there's a couple more, right? This line CD, that would be skew. Also this line that's sort of in the back behind the box, uh, the lower edge, line CH would also be skew. And there's another one up here, line AB would also be skew. Okay. So let's work through some examples, okay? So can you name each relation as parallel, perpendicular, or skew? Parallel, perpendicular, or skew. Okay, so now we have a diagram and we have rectangular, uh, rectangular prism, okay, also known as a box. Okay, so let's say that um, ding dong, you just got a delivery from Amazon and there is your rectangular prism. And before you open up the rectangular prism to see what's inside, you're so excited about your new geometry lesson that you're, you say, wait a second, let's not open this box. Let's figure out if these lines, line segments are parallel, perpendicular, or skew. Okay, so first, segment AD and segment BC. So AD is right here, okay, and BC is right here. So you can see that those are on the same plane. They're on this top sort of plane, plane ABC, and they are parallel to each other, okay? What about segment EH, segment EH, and segment DH? Well, you can see that those intersect each other at point H, so they're obviously coplanar, okay, and they intersect at a 90 degree angle, so those are perpendicular. Segment FG and segment AD, so here is FG, and here is AD, Okay, FG and AD. Now this is a tricky one. Some students look at that and they go, hmm, well they're not on the same face of the box, so maybe they're not coplanar, so maybe they're skew. Those are not skew. Those are a tricky question, okay? So segment FG and segment AD are not skew. They are parallel. So even though you don't see, even though you don't see the, the plane that cuts through them, there is a plane, sort of a diagonal plane that would cut through both of those. So those are coplanar. Okay, what about EF and CG? Segment EF and segment CG. So segment EF is right here in the front, sort of bottom edge. Segment CG is right over here. Okay, those are non-coplanar and do not intersect, so those would be skew. Segment BF and segment BC. Segment BF is right here. Segment BC is here. We can see they intersect at point B in perpendicular fashion. Therefore, those are perpendicular. Segment AE. AE is over here. And segment HG. 
And you figured out that those are skew. Very good. Okay, so your next new term that you have to learn for this lesson is a transversal. So a transversal is a line that intersects two coplanar lines at two different points, okay? So what we have here is first I wanna draw your attention to this magenta line up top here. So that's line L1, okay, line L1. So line L1 is sitting there in two dimensional space just minding its own business. And then along comes line L2, this magenta line on the bottom here. Line L2 is coplanar with line L1. Okay, and it is just sitting there as well. And so those two lines are sitting there in two dimensional space, minding their own business. And then along comes this blue line that is also coplanar with them, this blue line, and it cuts through both of those magenta lines. So this blue line, line T, is a transversal because a transversal is any line that cuts through or intersects two coplanar lines in two different points. Okay, so when you have this diagram, when you have a transversal that cuts through two lines, um, a couple things happen that you need to know about. So the first thing is that there are eight distinct angles formed. There's actually more than eight angles formed, but there's eight distinct angles that we are concerned about. Okay, so the eight distinct angles are angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, angle five, angle six, angle seven, and angle eight. Okay, so this is a great case. Okay, this is a great case where remember when we talked first talked about points, lines, planes, and angles. Um, we talked about how do you name an angle, and you can name an angle most commonly by three letters. Okay, a point on a side, the vertex, a point on the other side. Okay, or you can name an angle just by the vertex. And then remember, I told you that a less common um, case is where the author will or the illustrator will number the angles. This is a perfect case when you have two lines cut by a transversal okay this is a perfect case where we're going to number the angles just to keep track of them okay and they're not always numbered in this sort of clockwise naming convention sometimes they are sometimes they're not sometimes the authors will name it like one two three four five six seven eight yeah so it's not always a convention to name it in clockwise fashion fashion okay these eight distinct angles are angles that we're going to study in today's lesson and the next lesson. Okay, so today what we want to do is we want to look at pairs of these angles. We want to pair these angles up and we want to show what relationship these angle pairs have. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. Um, oh, one other thing that we have to distinguish. Um, the So there's eight angles. Four of them are interior angles, interior angles. Okay, so the interior is the region that is bound between these two lines, right? In between these two lines. Okay, so the interior region is this region here, and the angles that lie in the interior of the two lines are angles three, four, five, and six. So these are all interior angles. So obviously the other four angles one, two, seven, and eight are exterior angles. So exterior angles lie outside of the region that's bounded um, by uh, the region that is between the two lines. Okay, so exterior are one, two, seven, and eight. So here are your angle pair relationships. There's four of them that we want to um, that we want to talk about. So the first angle pair relationship I'm going to talk about is corresponding angles. The word corresponding is talking about the relative to relative position of the angles. Okay, the relative position of the angles. So in this diagram, okay, I changed it up a little bit. So now we have two lines. We have these two white lines. They're cut by this blue transversal. And I did not name the lines or the transversal. It really doesn't matter. You can name it L1, L2, and T. It really doesn't matter. Okay, because right now we're just focused in on these eight angles and naming the paired relationship. Okay, so each of these four angles sitting here at the top sits in a relative position. And what I mean by relative position is a position relative to the original line and the transversal that it cut. Okay, so for example, angle two, okay, sits in the upper right corner. Right. If we think of one as the upper left corner, two as the upper right corner, 
three as the lower right corner, four as the lower um, left corner, okay? Two and six are corresponding angles because they sit in the same relative position. They both sit in the upper right corner, okay, relative to the line that's been cut by the transversal, okay? Um, what about angle one, okay? What does, what angle down here, five, six, seven, or eight, corresponds to the same position that angle one is sitting in? Well, angle one is sitting in the upper left corner, and so that would be angle five. Okay, so angle pairs, consecutive angles. Consecutive angles are angles that are on the same side, and some teachers even call these same side interior angles, okay? So consecutive means on the same side of the transversal, okay? Um, so consecutive interior angles. So interior means inside. So now we're only talking about these interior angles, angles three, four, five, and six. So which pairs of these are same side or consecutive interior, okay? So consecutive interior angles are angles that are, first of all, they're interior, but also these angles are found between the two lines on the same side of the transversal. So if you notice, angle three and angle six are both on the right side of the transversal. Angle four and angle five are both on the left side of the transversal. So angle four and angle five, we would call consecutive interior angles. What about angle three? What is consecutive interior um, to angle three? Well, angle six is, okay? Question, what about three and seven? Are those consecutive interior angles? No, because while they are consecutive, they're on the same side of the transversal, three is an interior angle, but seven is an exterior angle. So those are not consecutive interior angles. Okay, alternate interior angles. This is everyone's favorite, AIAs, alternate interior angles. These angles are found between the two lines on opposite sides of the transversal. So alternate means jump over the transversal or on opposite sides of the transversal. Okay, interior means still we're talking about interior angles. So we're only talking about angles three, four, five, and six. So you can see that angle four okay, is an interior angle. So the alternate interior angle to angle four would be angle six because it's interior, but it's alternate. It's on the opposite side, okay? So then obviously with angle three, what is the alternate interior to angle three? Angle five, good. So angle four and angle six are alternate interiors and angle three and angle five are alternate interiors. Alternate exteriors. So now we're alternating again to the opposite side of the transversal, but we're only talking about exterior angles. So what were the four exterior angles? Angle one, two, seven, and eight in this diagram, okay? Um, so with angle one, the alternate exterior would be angle seven. And then with angle two, the alternate exterior would be angle eight. Good. So here's a little summary of those four angle pair relationships. Okay, and this is actually found in your textbook on page 128. So corresponding angles sit in the same relative position. Alternate interiors are interiors that are on opposite sides of the transversal. Alternate exteriors are exterior angles that are on opposite side of the transversal. And then consecutive interior angles are interior, but they're on the same side, okay? And one of my students asked last year asked me, Mr. Lee, well, what about, do, do we have anything for consecutive exterior angles? No, we don't really care about consecutive exterior angles. Okay, so now, I've made this example a little bit harder. I've changed up the diagram. I've changed up the numbering of the angles and I've changed up the orientation. So now the two lines that are being cut by a transversal, the two yellow lines are the two lines. And then the red line is the transversal. So I've kind of turned this thing, rotated it at 90 degrees um, sideways, right? Clockwise. 
Okay, and then look at, I changed up the naming of the angles. So here's angle one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So if you can answer these questions, you're in good shape. Okay, so first, can you name all the angles that are interior angles? Go ahead and name all of the interior angles. So out of eight of them, four of them are interior. What are they? The interior angles now are these four angles that are inside between the two yellow lines. Okay, two, four, five, and seven. The exterior angles are the ones that are outside. Okay, angle one, three, six, and eight. Now, can you name all of the angles that are first of all corresponding, then all the alternate interiors, all the alternate exteriors, and then the consecutive interiors? Okay. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do that. Okay, so corresponding angles sit in the same relative position. So one corresponds to over here, it corresponds to five. Two corresponds with six. And then what does three correspond with? Seven, and then four corresponds with eight, okay? Alternate interior. So remember the interior angles are these, two, four, five, and seven. So the alternate interiors are two and seven. They're, remember they're going on opposite sides of the transversal and then also four and five. What about alternate exteriors? One and eight, three and six. And then finally we have the consecutive interiors, same side interior. So two, four, five, and seven are the interiors. So two and five and four and seven. All right, guys, that's all I have for you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoy your practice problems. Here they are right here. And we'll see you in the next video.